This is the Fujifilm X-T4. It is a camera that always made me wonder, what is it actually hiding underneath that beautiful retro body? Is it even any good? Or does it have the guts to be a professional cinematography machine? Well, let's bring it outside and unleash the beast. So before I even start, I'm gonna straight up tell you that this is one hell of a camera. And that is coming from me, a Sony user. My daily camera have always been the a7 III and when I got to test this camera, I was genuinely curious. Oh by the way, thanks to Fujifilm for lending me two of the X-T4s cause it allowed me to shoot this review with this camera itself. So starting off with the design. Well, you either love it or hate it. I personally don't mind the retro styling of the body. The top dials could be helpful sometimes, and this camera also comes in two different colors, but personally I would go for the black one. In terms of ergonomics, you might think that the grip needs to be a little bigger, but as far as I've been using it, there has not been an issue. So anyways, there are a bunch of function buttons which you can change and remap to do whatever you want, and this includes touch gestures for the touchscreen, which I think is pretty clutch, and also the Lever to change between stills and movie mode is also pretty cool and I think a lot more cameras should have this feature. And overall, I think it is a pretty well built camera. I might even say that it is better built than my Sony a7 III. So moving on, this camera is feature packed with a bunch of different flavors for video recording. This includes 4K60, all intra and long GOP recording, HEVC codec for better compression, F-Log profile, 10 bit color. I mean, honestly, the list just goes on forever. I haven't even got into slow motion features yet. Anyways, th the video quality is really superb. Like seriously, the dynamic range and highlight roll off is so tasteful. I mean, there's not much to say. The footage speaks for itself. I'm getting cinema camera vibes while looking at what the camera spits out. So in terms of specs, there is an option to shoot in 4K 30 at 400 megabits per second. I mean, this captures a lot of information needed for post-production. Now pair that up with Fujifilm's amazing F-Log and 10-bit color. The result is just marvelous. Now moving on, shooting slow-mo with this camera is also quite fun. The 4K60 looks really crispy and I'm pretty sure it would be helpful a lot. The 2K120 also looks decent and you can easily use this in a professional project. But the 240p on the other hand might be a little too soft for some people but it is still there if you really need it to squeeze that extra bit of frames. Other than that, this camera is pretty easy to use, the battery life was really really good. Even with all the video features, I was getting similar battery life as my a7 III, which is awesome. The menu system was okay, but if you are coming from a Sony, literally any menu system would be kind of an upgrade. But unlike a Sony though, the low light performance is not mind blowing. It is good enough for normal use cases, but you, you just couldn't do anything crazy like shooting at 8000 ISO or something like that. But for a regular shoot, I, I did not find any problems using this. Now, this brings us to the drawbacks of this camera. A lot of people say that the autofocus is not good for video, but as per my testing, I found out that the camera nails focus almost all the time perfectly. But the way it racks focus is the main issue here. And I also seem to find that uh, the lens 
really affects how the camera focuses quite a bit. Also, these are the two lenses I was using for this whole shoot. And by the way, I love this 16 to 80. It is such a versatile lens and it also has optical image stabilization. And that brings us to the second problem of this camera, which is IBIS. IBIS built-in image stabilization on this is pretty great, but just for when you're holding it still. Once you try to make any type of moves, the IBIS kind of feels jerky and it has this robotic feel to it. It seems that they have tuned the IBIS for photo instead of video. So to fix this, you can turn off IBIS and add weight to your camera to have a much more stable shot. Or you can leave the IBIS on and use it with a gimbal. It doesn't seem to have an issue with that, at least most of the time. You know, I'm fine living with the autofocus. I think I can get used to it. But for me personally, the IBIS is the one that affects my workflow quite a bit. So yeah, that is kind of a bummer. But besides that, I think this camera is great. It has Type-C for charging, two memory card slots for simultaneous or sequential recording, a micro HDMI for clean output of 10-bit 422 at 4K, so you can use an external recorder if you want. Also, if you wanted to plug in your headphones, you would need to use the included Type-C adapter because the X-T4 doesn't come with a headphone jack, unfortunately. So overall, I think this camera is really amazing. If you're fine with the IBIS and autofocus, I think you should really consider this camera because the features, the amazing color signs and that crazy, crazy dynamic range and that beautiful highlight roll off. Honestly, it is really quite hard to beat at this price point. So again, thanks to Fujifilm for being kind enough to provide me with these cameras. Note that all opinion was from myself and nobody else. So with that out of the way, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.